Hi friends, this is Cole Chance at Yoga TX and thank you for unrolling your mat with me today. And we're almost to the big holidays, so I wanted to do a little sequence on stress and anxiety. A lot of the stress and things that we worry about is totally warranted. Our families can be crazy and we can be crazy around our families. But it's really good to have some tools to scale it back, to start to separate facts from story, because our minds like to spin, spin stories, and find a way to get centered and to get rooted. So we all have a happy holiday, <laughs> and for many other reasons throughout the year. But I thought this was appropriate timing. So let's just come into a seated position. You can be seated in, seated in a chair or on the ground. Maybe you sit on top of something so that the hips are higher than the knees. One of the first things that we do when we are having anxiety or stress is we start to breathe up in the chest. Start to deepen your breath and bring it down into the belly. So as I'm talking, just keep widening and elongating and broadening your breath. So like I said, we start to breathe shallow and up in the chest. And not only does this create tension, muscular tension, it also tells the body that we're in fight or flight mo mode, which is essentially telling our body that we are under attack. We are in stress and our body releases hormones to deal with such things. So if we can start to breathe deeply, start to create that habit, and you can tell your body to relax, that I'm okay to chill out. Because while there's many things where we need those stress hormones, that adrenaline and things like that, if we were really in a life-threatening situation, we need those. But our body doesn't know the difference between stressors, it only knows the stress. So when we're in certain situations where maybe we're worrying ourselves into a fight or flight mode, this is a wonderful practice to bring you back home to center and to relax mode, telling the body that you're safe. So I'll show you a mudra. So we'll take, kiss the insides of the thumb pit, I suppose, together, and we'll turn the hands, place the palms on the heart, close the eyes. This is Garuda mudra, eagle mudra. But this means and signifies protection and safety. It has an intention behind it and you can bring the affirmation that I am protected and I am safe. It's also nice to do this up against a wall so you can feel compression on both sides or do this on the ground as well just so you can feel almost hugged. Breathe into the hands and the hands push into the heart. I am protected and I am safe. This can help to calm the nervous system. Walk the nervous system back up from the ledge. Good. Bring the hands forward and we'll switch the clasp. So bring the other thumb in and place the hands to the heart. This time let's count the breath. Let's breathe five counts in and five counts out. So close the eyes. Again, roll the shoulder blades back. And start to inhale for one, two, three, four, Five, and big exhale for one, two, three, four, five, and in, one, two. 
five and out. Five and in. And out. Wonderful. And drop your hands. And notice if your body feels a little more settled. It's amazing what just a little bit of breath work can do. Yeah. Let's flutter the eyes open. And we'll do a couple sun salutations. So moving with breath. Sometimes we can get too much in the mind. So we can add some movements, focus on the movements, focus on the breath, focus on bringing them together. And sometimes that can get you out of the, out of the loop of story that we create. So let's come to the top of the mat. We'll just do some gentle sun salutations. So just come to the top and let's just shake for a moment. Let's just wave the arm side to side. And I'll tell you one other thing, a little story about um, antelopes that whenever they, whenever they're in stress, like they're being a lion's chasing them and they're freaking out, their whole body is flooded with adrenaline, but they get away. After that happens, the antelope shakes. It's to release all of that energy and all of that adrenaline. So in the same, in the same uh, lane as that, just shake the body. This can be a really good thing to do just to, ugh. I mean, you've probably done that in traffic when you're upset, like the ugh, or kind of shake, but it's the expelling of this energy or adrenaline or whatever it is. It can be called dukkha, which is suffering. So just move around, shake a little bit of it out. Take the feet together and let's inhale up and then exhale out the mouth. Inhale up, let the arms kind of be heavy, and exhale. Three more. Let it out. Once more. Ha! And come to the top of the mat. And now we'll do some sun salutations. Hands together. Take the thumb to the sternum. Press the sternum into the thumb. Inhale. Sigh it out the mouth. Close the mouth and start to breathe through the nose as you inhale, arms up. And exhale, let's just open to the right. Gaze back at the right hand. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, twist to the left. Gaze back. And inhale up. Bow forward. Exhale, letting all the breath out. Bend the left knee, plant the left hand. Inhale, open up to the right. Exhale forward. Shake the head. Bend the right knee, plant the right hand. Inhale to the left. And bow. Hands to the shins, halfway lift. And exhale, fold it out. Arms wide, flat back, and we'll open up. And hands to heart center. Again, inhale, lifts it up. Exhale, we open to the right. Inhale up. Exhale to the left. Inhale up. So we're using the whole breath to get where we're going. So constant movement. Exhale down. Plant the left hand. Bend the left knee as we open to the right. And bow forward. Switch. Open to the left. And bow forward. Hands to the shins, halfway lift, and fold. Plant the hands, step back, downward facing dog. Plank pose, inhale, 
and exhale, drop the knees, come all the way down onto the belly. Press the pelvic floor, or press the pubic bone into the floor and lift up. Cobra pose. Press the ground away. Child's pose. So for child's pose, for this one, let's bring the knees together. Bring the hands over the back of the head. You can stay right here, or if you'd like to bring the hands around and grab the heels. This is just a really centering and grounded pose, grounded and centering as we're it tight in the little ball, bringing everything to core and also rooted on the ground. Feeling the rib cage expand in 360 degrees. And start to come up. Inhale, lift. And hands to heart center. Let's take puppy pose. So bring the hands out to the top of the mat. And I'm going to bend down. So the hips are over the heels. I'm gazing forward. Or you can put the forehead on the ground. But really long from the hands to the hips. Mm, big opening. And then we'll come in to a downward dog. So maybe shift the hands back. Pedal, pedal, pedal. Just opening the backs of the hamstrings. We won't stay here long. Lift the right leg on an inhale. And exhale, bring the knee to the chest, round the back. And we'll plant the foot by the left hand, the knee by the right hand. We'll come into a pigeon pose. And you can come into a full pigeon pose. Try to, you know, finding your edge, lining up the hips. And we're just going to come in to, we'll call it a swan, um, a swan pose, I believe they call it in yin. So I'm just kind of to the side. The foot's more in. It's just more of a lounging pose finding more restorative. So I'm just resting the head. I have the knee kind of off to the side here. You can have the leg down, the knee down as well. Just find something that's comfortable. Just a slight opening in the hip. This just feels like a nurturing pose. Hmm. Let's start to push the hands up. And take the leg around and we'll take a twist. Twist it out. Inhale, right arm up. Left hand behind and exhale, twist. Hand can come to heart or that right hand can come all the way around. Whatever you'd like to do. And breathing. One thing that I like to do whenever I'm spinning out in my head or worrying about something is that I tell myself fact or story. Because a lot of things we just make up, a lot of stories we just tell ourselves, things that aren't true. So I have to say fact or story, is this true? What is true and what am I making up? And separate those two. And then I realize the things that I'm stressing out about are actually the things that I've made up in my head, not the things that I actually have any basis to think that of. Go ahead and unwind. Reach the left leg back. We'll plant the hands and come into downward dog. Left leg lifts up. Bring the knee into the chest and then bring the knee towards the left hand. The left leg kind of comes in towards the pelvis. So this will look different for different people. If you want to kind of come more onto your left hip, or you can just come down forward here, but just make sure it's kind of a gentle, gentle opening. Find somewhere to relax your head. Maybe it's on a block. 
you know, when I just make a list and I say fact, what are the facts? And uh, yeah, that can really help. There's something called Santosha, which is contentment. It's in the Yoga Sutras that I'm needing to come for contentment, complete contentment, which is really, really difficult. But one thing that I think is interesting is not only do we need to be okay with kind of what's happening around us, but also to realize uh, what is the reality of what's happening around us. Because sometimes we try to fix things, but we're fixing things that um, could be the story instead of the fact. So coming, coming to back to what is actually the reality and moving forward from there. And that can really eliminate a lot of the worry and kind of bring you back more in line with being okay with things, which is a good place to be. Let's come back over to the left. Swing the right leg around. Right hand behind, left arm up. Either wrap that arm around and gaze behind, or bring that arm up and twist. It's ringing out the torso here. Ringing out the stress, the worry. And release. And just come down onto the back here. So take a pillow or a bolster and we'll place it behind the back. I'm just gonna take a heart opener here. Whenever we're stressed, the tension from breathing shallow turns us into this closed off. Everything's closed here. So just the simple act of opening, even if you're in, you know, in a anxious state of mind, changing the body can actually affect the way that the mind um, is perceiving things. So let's come into don't take the legs long. You can take the legs into Baddha Konasana if you like with the soles of the feet together or you could take the knees together, whatever feels nice. I'll do this actually, it feels nice. I'll bring the arms wide into cactus arms and I'm just going to open the heart space. Breathing. North, south, east, and west. Breathing big. Maybe you try a couple different leg variations. Now I'll just bring the legs long. Let me shake them out. You can lay here as long as you like. But I hope that maybe you can use some of these tools that we went over today. The mudra of safety and protection. The deep breathing, very, very important. And also the releasing the energy through movement. Trying to get out of the mind by moving the body. And also opening the heart and separating fact from story. So lots of little things, and hopefully one or two of these will help when you get into situations that cause you distress. Hmm, I'll leave you all here, let you lay as long as you'd like. Thank you all for joining me. Find out more about me at Cold Chance Yoga, yogatx.org. Thank you all for joining me. Namaste. Your knees here and sit your hips back. We'll walk our arms out. And your hips may not come all the way down. You may be more like this and that's fine too. So whatever is 
good to you. But walk your fingertips out so we're opening up underneath this, underneath your armpit. 